are looking at the most sophisticated, technically advanced greenhouse farming operation in existence. 125 acres of glass structures just an hour north of LA. This is Howling Nurseries. What the space shuttle is to aviation, this is to farming. So would it be fair to say that this is probably the most high-tech, state-of-the-art greenhouse in the country? In the world. Inside are endless rows of perfect tomatoes growing in a nutrient-rich liquid diet, a diet that requires no soil, none at all. We feed it the nitrogen and the potassium and all the other elements such as iron and zinc. Computers monitor everything. So it's really quite a step away from the field farming to a much more scientific level where you'll get 20 times the production per acre in a facility like this. And the waste? In the field, nearly half of all tomatoes don't meet consumer standards. Here, only 2% are rejected. This holds water, it's essentially inert. It's also uh, a very porous media. The plants sink their roots in coconut fiber. It drains, it, and it's also a natural product. When we're done with it, it goes out to green waste and it can be composted and recycled. These vines grow about a foot a week, and since it's all enclosed, there are no bugs, no weeds, no fungus. That means no pesticides, no herbicides, no fungicides. All those things that none of us really want to use. The greenhouse basically eliminates 98% of, of the use of those products. But these tomatoes are not organic. The real position on organic is then you can't feed them fertilizers, liquid fertilizers or chemical oh. fertilizers, which we do here. You do but feed we, fertilizers. Okay. But we think of ourselves as being better than organic. While most farmers gauge the seasons and watch for changing weather, Casey Howling's greenhouses have just one season, the growing season. Crops are grown year-round in an environment that can only be called tomato nirvana. What makes this greenhouse more advanced than any other are the computer systems that control the temperature, the humidity, and the carbon dioxide levels. When do I start the water? How much water do I give them? What's the nutrient levels? There is a huge amount of factors. So why aren't other farmers copying this operation? Professor Terry Fujimoto runs a hydroponic greenhouse at Cal Poly Pomona. So if hydroponic farming is so fantastic, then what what is keeping it from spreading across California? Money. And it's very expensive to, to let's say, take an acre and convert it into a hydroponic uh, operation. The most recent expansion of the Howlings Nursery cost $50 million. And there are still some circumstances beyond their control. In 2000, before better screens were installed, a tiny but powerful pest got through. We had a plague here, it was called the white fly plague. We ended up having to clean the whole facility out and replant it all. And it, that was a pretty significant uh, hit that we took. But not only did that happen, that was also the same time that the uh, blackouts were happening in California. So it was almost like the perfect storm. They have since built their own power source. Solar panels now give them nearly total energy independence. This one's done. These tomatoes do cost a bit more, but customers are buying. Greenhouse farming is still a very small part of California's $36 billion agriculture economy. But experts say it's growing by a healthy 10% a year. And its productivity is unmatched. If these tomatoes were grown in fields, you would need 24 times as much land. And that's why the future of farming may look like this. <laughs>